So I'm Natasha Madoff. Thank you for being here. I am here to present ADA, a technology and digital culture blog for Brazilian women. This is the lady that we are named after. She's Ada Lovelace, and she's considered the world's first computer programmer. What is the problem that we're trying to solve with that? We know that women spend now, now one third more money in tech than in makeup per year, but only 1% of them think that the tech industry has them in mind when designing products. So we want to serve this community that don't feel addressed by the tech industry and the tech news media with, with a, a content that serves their needs. And so ADA will be the bridge between the tech industry and the female consumer market. We think that with our content, we'll be build a community of women that are very interested in this theme, or, and that would be highly available for advertisers. We think that with ADA, when the, the, when the Brazilian tech industry wants to reach their female consumer market, they will come to us. What are our revenue sources? Advertising, syndication, we think we have, uh, we already have indications that our content w is valuable for other uh, news outlets in Brazil, and down the line events. Why we chose Brazil? Besides being my home country, it's a, um, it's a merger market. We know that we, as it is right now, and there's a lot of space to grow, but as it is right now, we one third, over one third of all online traffic in Latin America passes through Brazil. 91% of the internet users there are connected in social media of some kind. Smartphone use is growing at steady rates and also has a lot of space to grow. And so we estimate our target market right now and it will grow at 36 million women. This is the team. We're both journalists. Diana Senato is based in Sao Paulo. She is trained in London and she's very active at the startup scene in, in, in Sao Paulo. I'm Natasha Madoff, I'm based in New York, and I have 15 years of experience in print online media covering tech, science, and environmental issues. This is the website we launched in late March, and before I give you some really good numbers, I'd like to talk about a little bit about the content that we're putting. We have three kinds of content. We have explainers and tutorials. One article that was very popular, that was actually a request from our readers, was what was Heartbleed? Why should we worry about that? Apps and gadgets reviews. Uh, we usually bundle the app reviews by subject. Seven apps to improve your productivity at work. Seven cool games. Seven gastronomy apps that chefs actually use. And we also have social tech news, social media news, tech news, and long form articles. This illustration you see on the slide was commissioned by us for one of our most popular articles so far. It was called the Silicon Valley Wipes. And it was an article that was a first person account on how it feels for a woman to leave her career and family behind to follow her husband into Silicon Valley. This is our numbers for our first month. We had 12,000 page views and 7,000 uniques. We had our first content partnership within a week of launch with the Pemi magazine. It's an independent female magazine that's akin to Marie Claire here. We have in our Facebook page, we found out that we have 76% of our fans are women, which shows that we're right on target, and half of that is 25 to 34 years of age. We also had a lot of spontaneous press and speaking engagements. One of our stories was picked up by the Brazilian version of The New Yorker, which drove insane traffic to us, and we have been invited to be judges at the first Angel Hacks hackathon that's happening in June in Sao Paulo, which shows validation to our story, to our, our proposition. What are next steps? We want to continue building our audience. We think we can reach 35,000 uniques when we are one year old. More content partnerships that has been shown that is great for brand building and also for, uh, for driving traffic. We will set, start sending out a newsletter pretty soon. We want to experiment with online video. We want to start creating advertising opportunities within social media and the site for the niche audience that we're already reaching and what we need. Mentorship and advice on content strategy and business development. Whatever advice you can throw my way, it will be very welcome. And also, uh, we would like to redesign the site and improve the over, overall user experience. Thank you. Mm -hmm. and you need to be 
you need to be careful about you know the sort of see monkey say monkey mm -hmm. bit. Um, you know, apart from that, I thought it was really good. One thing I'd love to know, Natasha, is what's distinctive about it being Brazilian? Is it the fact that it's in Portuguese? Is it the fact that it's, I mean, I guess I'd want more of a sense of what's distinctive about that market. And also, um, if anything, what could be a selling point to partners in other parts of the world that want to get into that market? Because I think there's some unusual aspects to the Brazilian market that we're not aware of. We're very social. And uh, we saw that, and the, the Brazilian woman is, somewhat similar to the American woman in the sense that they love their smartphones and, and they were really social. But I think we take this a step further. When, when I was doing my market research, I saw that um, it's very funny how they think about themselves as not tech people at all. Oh, I'm not a technology person, but I have a laptop, I have my smartphone, I have, I, I have a tablet, I download an app a week. But it, because there's this, 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 con this connection between the, the industry's discourse and themselves. And so I think there's an opportunity there. And we saw this, like we were really embraced. People were saying, we love this, we love this, we love this all the time. So it's really been that. Hi, Natasha. Um, I'm going to jump in here. I'm uh, just curious if you had, if you've um, identified more of the tech consumer that you're after or the tech professional in Brazil. Can you talk a little bit about which we, we, we're reaching at this moment the tech consumer because that's where we think we can scale because that's the largest. Sure. But in fact, we can see that the, the tech professional is very interested in us as well. Uh, Natasha, I have two unrelated questions. First of all, I thought the confidence and the, the flow of your presentation was great. Thank you. Given that you say the women are always on their smartphones, they're very social users, do you have a mobile strategy? Mm -hmm. That's the second before mm -hmm. someone else gets to jump sure. in. And is technology really not gender neutral? I mean, I, I don't think I would, I, I would be a little wary of some publication or information that said it spoke to me as a woman who used technology. That's a great question. So those two but, well, my first question is our side at the moment is responsive. So it really works well, well in, in mobile. And we want to go ahead working more on mobile, but that's the moment what we have hands and resources to do. It's just so now you, are, you don't have any mobile. It's a responsive site. You can you can okay. you can read it pretty well on uh, on mobile. And the second question is that at the beginning everybody was like, oh, tech site for women, isn't it gender neutral? And what we found out that our voice responds pretty well to both genders to the point where we get recommendations on Facebook by men. Men are sharing our site saying, they think this is good for women, but, but actually I like to hear, to, to read this. The, the content's pretty great. I don't think it's, so we're, but the thing is women use technology a little bit different than men. It, maybe, maybe the tech consumer, more mainstream <laughs> tech consumer it is. So we're addressing that need, and that need is also being filled by at least a, a certain group of men. So. Uh, Natasha, hey, um, that was really good. And I think there's, this is a little bit more of a comment, there's potential business model also that could be beyond sort of the traditional kind of business, the media sort of subscription, advertising, et cetera, is being a place to capture expertise on the emerging young female um, tech consumer, mm -hmm. um, which is a very valuable uh, data and insight, which I think could then, you know, uh, there's a lot of larger firms and, and corporations that would be, uh, that would, prize that sort of insight um, into what they're thinking about, what they're talking about, trends, um, developments, um, because you know there's, there's generational shifts that are pretty significant across a lot of cultures, and I'm sure it's the same in, in Brazil as well. So um, I, I would, just something to keep in mind, I'll write it down here mm -hmm. as well, but um, as, as this evolves and you start to capture that insight, um, yeah. you know, think about building maybe some differentiated business models around that beyond the traditional ones, which might help sustain um, the content development as well. Thank you. Last question. Uh, you might want to talk to um, a fellow from my year, 2012, whose name, coincidentally enough, is Ada. Uh, she started a uh, kind of a, a, a tech learning platform. Initially, it was supposed to be geared toward women. And she still has that sensibility, but obviously there are there are male uh, you know people that use it. But she has a certain voice, and I think the instructors are largely, are largely female. So maybe something you want to look into 
uh, in terms of how you can kind of use that voice but then expand the reach. And then speaking of expanding the reach, I think you don't want to put the cart before the horse, but a lot of the numbers you, you spoke about in, in the beginning uh, were very impressive in terms of the size of the market, mm -hmm. but you painted the market in terms of Latin America, so I'm wondering if you're ever going to like give plans to kind of translate into Spanish, because uh, obviously that would greatly you know enhance mm -hmm. your reach, and I think as a result, that 35,000 unique projection could be you know, dramatically uh, you know, surpassed in, in, in a year. Oh yeah, that's something that we would like to do, essentially, yes, thank you.